A new poll from Axios says that politics are driving Democrats mad, not Republicans, Democrats. And I think I know why. For one, there's a group of people that are more likely to be triggered or angry. And there's a lot of reasons why you might claim that, that, that that's the case. Sure. But I think it really comes down to trust in media. Republicans don't trust media. That means when they see fake news, they go, ah, I don't believe it. They see another story that contradicts the fake news and they go, I didn't believe it in the first place. How many bombshell stories were retracted? Now you have Democrats who trust the news and they go, wow, I didn't know that was true. Then they read another story. Wait, what? But that's, is that true too? How can they both be true at the same time? And their heads explode. Let's read this story. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. It's PayPal option, crypto option, physical address. But of course, the best thing you can do is share this video. The only way that I'm going to survive, especially with the mass censorship that's been hitting, is if you guys share the video. The other day, I, I did a segment talking about how Facebook suspended me because I was reporting on the whistleblower. I kid you not. They suspended me. I'm, it's now been lifted, but I don't know how much longer I'll last anyway. Nor do I care. I'll get in my van, go, John, go drive down by the river, go fishing for the rest of my life. But let's learn about why Democrats are crazy. Axios says more than 70% of Democrats say politics is making them increasingly angry about America leaving them feeling like strangers in their own land, according to an Axios on HBO poll conducted by SurveyMonkey. I'll tell you why I think that that part is, right? Democrats feel like strangers in their own land because the news they're being fed is shock rage bait and they trust it. This is my opinion on what's happening, right? So think about it. You have an ever ever increasing escalation of insane far left identitarian content that makes you feel like you're living in this, you know, I don't know, like Trump is, is a fascist and, you know, white supremacy and all these things are happening all around you. And you're like, this is not the world I grew up in. Republicans don't trust the media. And Republicans are saying it's all fake anyway. And so they look around and they say the world is as it's been. That's fake, not real. I know the world I live in. And the result is more than 70% of Democrats feeling like they're not in their own, they're strangers. Democrats say nearly everything they watch, read, or listen triggers their anger, even the soothing voices of NPR. The big picture, Americans as a whole are just plain mad and feeling like strangers in their own land, though a lower percentage for Republicans describe themselves, a lower percentage of Republicans describe themselves as angry. 57% compared to 74% of Democrats or feeling like a stranger, 52% to 71. Other people are getting angrier too. 58% report their friends, family, and coworkers seem angrier than five years ago. Full stop, man. Seriously, think about it. I read this and I was like, dude, everyone I know is angry. Like friendships are, are, are being tried and tested. Now for me, for one, I have very few friends because I'm just a weird person who sits behind a camera all day. But the, the friends I do have, I, I, I'm, I'm being somewhat self-deprecating. I have many friends. I just don't really hang out with them that often because I'm a workaholic. But my friends, relatively normal people, we only get mad at each other. We have very different opinions. Like my friend's trying to get me to vote for Bernie again. And like she's sending me all these messages about why it's right. And I'm like, dude, never going to happen. Like, come on, man. I think he's he's, he's crossed that line. But anyway, we're still friends. I'm not mad at her because she likes Bernie. I respect that she likes Bernie. I just think she's wrong. You know what I mean? But I started thinking about, you know, there are some people I know who aren't particularly good friends. My neighbors even. Man, these conversations are, are getting crazy. You know, I was talking to someone recently and they started getting, they started getting angry when I was telling them like basic news facts. And that's what I want to get into because I think I know why the Democrats are going nuts. It's really simple. Democrats trust media and the media contradicts itself. So their, their, their worldview is fractured by things that can't click together. You can't simultaneously trust the media and then believe the same outlet publishing two different stories. I kid you not. I've got an example of Politico writing two stories that tell, that say both stories are wrong. How, how, what, what? Well, I don't trust the press, right? So I look at them and I just laugh. I'm like, okay, dude, whatever. Y'all are crazy. Both stories must be fake. I have no idea. Or the first story might be real, but, but anyway, let's read more. Let's read more. They say those who talk about politics the most are also the angriest. of Americans who discuss politics several times a day report feeling angry at least once a day over something they heard or read in the news. That falls to 56% among those who discuss it once a week and 39% for those who discuss it about once a month. Don't discuss it at all and you'll be happy. The bottom line, the Republican anger that animated the Trump rise and presidency gets most of the media attention. Turns out this is the bipartisan era of rage and estrangement fueled by rising interest in American politics. I tell you what the result is civil war. 
Man, I, I, I've had so many conversations about this. Let me just stop you right there. They, everyone always goes, P Americans are too lazy. I, I know. I agree. A civil war has never been fought by the lazy or the majority. What's happening is the people who vote are being pushed further and further away from each other. Social media is drowning out centrist voices and the fringes of the left and the right are getting louder. Now, Republicans have absolutely no problem tearing down the fringes of the far right, conservatives. But the left embraces it. And this means there's, there's not going to be, uh, there, there, there's, it's, it's, it's untenable, okay? Me as a moderate, I can see my moderate friends just bowing out and saying, you know, there's very few of them. You know, for the most part, they're just like, I don't know, man, I'm, we're playing video games. But I look to the far left and I see them openly embracing Antifa. And then I'm just like, mm, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to support you because you're, you're, violent and lunat you're, you're violent lunatics. But so, so here's the thing. Let me now show you the best example possible as to why this happens. Why I posted a Twitter thread this morning. I know, I know it's a Twitter thread, but it's the most succinct way to show you exactly what went down. I tweeted, ha 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 ha. Okay, okay, I'm so done. These people are insane. Journalism is dead. You guys can duke it out. And that was to Politico. Natasha Bertrand and Ken Vogel. Natasha writes for Politico. Ken wrote for Politico and is now at the New York Times. Here's the story from Natasha. According to Giuliani, Ukrainian officials conspired with the Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee to help boost the Democratic nominee's campaign and damage Trump's candidacy. No evidence has emerged to support that idea. Oh, heavens, Politico. No evidence has ever emerged to support this idea. Well, Politico, I would like to show you Politico, <laughs> who wrote in 20, Ken Vogel, Ukrainian efforts to sabotage Trump backfire. Kiev officials are scrabbling to make amends with the president-elect after quietly working to boost Clinton. What? <laughs> I thought Politico just told me there was no evidence to support this idea. Oh, but wait, you say. They were quietly working to boost Clinton. Perhaps the distinction here is that Giuliani thinks they actually conspired with the Clinton campaign. Well, it says Ukrainian government officials tried to help Hillary Clinton and undermine Trump by publicly questioning his fitness for office. They also disseminated documents implicating a, a top Trump aide in corruption and suggested they were investigating the matter only to back away after the election. And they helped Clinton's allies research damaging information on Trump and his advisors, a Politico investigation found. Now, you may be saying, no, no, Tim, Clinton's allies does not mean the DNC or the campaign. OK, OK, OK. A Ukrainian American operative who was consulting for the DNC met with top officials in the Ukrainian embassy in Washington in an effort to expose ties between Trump, top campaign aide Paul Manafort and Russia, according to people with direct knowledge of the situation. How about a DNC consultant meeting at the Ukrainian embassy to dig up dirt on Trump? Is that not DNC collusion? Then you might say, no, Tim, a consultant does not mean it came from the top down. OK, fine. Nothing I say will convince you. I get it. But let me just end by saying this. Natasha wrote, no evidence has emerged to support that idea, not prove it. If Giuliani really believes Clinton colluded with the DNC. OK, you said support. I tell you this. The first story from Politico does support the idea. Does it prove it? No. Does it support it beyond a reasonable doubt? No. But support does not mean prove definitively. So I see how you, how, how, you, how you worded this so that support can be, you know, nebulous. Whoa, no, we really, it's a little vague. Also, the characterization of what Giuliani thinks. According to Giuliani, is that a quote from Giuliani? Did you ask him? Did you call him and say, Giuliani, what do you think? Or is Giuliani being hyperbolic and saying the DNC, referencing a paid consultant for the DNC, helping the Clinton campaign? Or are you stretching what Giuliani's, actu Giuliani's actually said to make it seem more extreme than he really is. I, I'll tell you this. I, and let me tie this to the, to the first story. What is the, a regular person supposed to believe when you see this news? Imagine you're a Democrat and this story pops up and you're like, Ukraine efforts to sabotage Trump. Whoa, that's weird. But it never goes anywhere. Well, then a few years later, you read this. How can you trust Politico? So here's what I think happens. You see, the people who realize what's happening. Don't, don't become Democrats or they might walk away. They might see this and say, they're lying to me endlessly. You can't trust the press. So let me show you this poll. More, more than nine in 10 Republicans and conservatives say their trust 
in the news media has decreased in the past 10 years. Yes. But I'll tell you this. Well, I, I, it's, it's been known for a long time. Republicans are less likely to trust news media, many of them. And Democrats are more likely to trust news media. That might actually be what causes someone to be a Democrat or Republican. If you read the news and they say Trump is a bad man and you believe it, you'll probably identify as a Democrat. If you read the news and they say Trump is a bad man and you're like, nah, the economy is good. I don't believe that. Then you might then become a Republican. The Reuters story I love citing said that if you watch Fox News, you think the economy is good. If you watch MSNBC, you think the economy is bad. But I tell you this, why are Democrats so angry? Because most media outlets, the BBC, the New York Times, even Moody's Analytics, they're saying the economy is good. So how can a Democrat function with a fractured worldview? Many people who might have been Democrats, people like me, I I don't function with a fractured worldview. I look at the stories and say, wow, the, the media is fake. And then my worldview is based on media lying to me. So I don't trust them. And then I look around me and I'm like, everything here makes sense. Everything here doesn't. The Democrats or, or the people, the people who can't see through that veil stay Democrats. They end up voting for mainstream candidates. They, they, they have Trump derangement syndrome. And l- yes, let me break down the moderate difference because I know, I know I'm supporting Tulsi and Yang, but it's, it's, it's complicated. I mean, they, they smear Tulsi as a Russian asset and all that stuff. And I think it's obvious she does not fall into that same camp. But the people who just believe the news there, it's like, imagine living in two different realities at the same time. One where Trump was the victim of a conspiracy and one where he wasn't, and they're lying about it. You can't. So what the Democrat then has to do is choose which, which narrative must be correct. Now, the same is true for, for Republicans. But here's the way I'll put it. When a story comes out, Ken Vogel says he stands by, uh, oh, no, not, not Vogel, one of the reporters who wrote this, because it's David Stern as well, I think Stern maybe said this, they stand by their reporting. I, I did reach out for comment, they didn't get back. I know it's kind of silly because it's not like, you know, a couple hours is enough time to respond, but they, they, they stand by their reporting. This is a Politico report. It's certified. What am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to believe? Well, what Natasha wrote has no evidence. She just said no evidence exists. I I went and found evidence. You are wrong. Evidence exists. Now, if you want to dispute your own story and you write, we are disputing a previous report from Politico, then I would be like, interesting. But no, that's not what she did. It seems like Natasha and there's there's another writer on this. I don't don't know. Uh, It seems like they didn't do any any journalism. It seems like they literally did no work to, to look into why this is. Because I tell you this, there certainly is other evidence. Ukrainian embassy confirms DNC contractor solicited Trump dirt in 2016. Oh, but it's John Solomon. Oh, you can't trust him. Just, you know, the former head of investigative reporting for the Washington Post. But now he's a conservative and a right wing guy because he's, he's saying things you don't want to hear. John Solomon didn't start the story. Ken Vogel did. David Stern did. John Solomon then corroborated it. But you're going to call John Solomon the conspiracy guy? I'm sorry, Politico. This all wraps back into this point I'm making. I kind of feel like Look at that. Moderates don't trust the news either. And you know what? This Look at this. It says um, the green is not changed and the purple is decreased. So they're asking uh, change in media trust. I think that's actually fair. I think um, if, if you were to break that percentage down into my view, I, I still do trust many media outlets to a certain extent. I check them, though. Trust but verify. And for the most part, my trust has gone down significantly. Many, many outlets have lost my trust, Okay, particularly Politico, because like I don't know what you're, you guys are doing. But I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this critically. Republicans have bowed out. Here's the point I'm trying to make. Why are Democrats so angry? These are the people who are, dis- are trying to stay in a fractured world of politics and news. They specifically outline how news makes them the angriest. As I said, if you're somebody who's reading Politico and two stories pop up that contradict each other, your brain will break. If you're somebody who, who sees that and says, wow, the only conclusion I can come to is that Politico is full of, is, is, is BS because both stories can't be true. Well, then you might find yourself saying, I don't trust the media. And then you might start questioning whether or not the orange man is actually bad. If you're somebody who says they're both true, you might find out that you're going to believe that the orange man is bad because you just trust every single story that comes out. And if you're a moderate like me, you distrust a lot of what the media says about Trump, but you still trust some of it. And, and there you go. There it is true. You know, it's look, there are stories about Trump. Trump has done bad things. 
Trump ordered a commando raid in Yemen, which killed an eight-year-old American girl. I know I rag on Obama for it all the time, but I have said repeatedly, Trump's foreign policy is, is too similar, and that's one of the biggest no-nos for me, plus the soldiers in Saudi Arabia. But for the most part, I end up falling more, uh, more in line uh, you know, against the left because the orange man is not that bad, especially compared to Obama. There's a lot of things Trump has done that I do not agree with, you know, wanting to have Trump derail the, the military staying at the golf resorts. I'm not saying that's on Trump specifically, but come on, man. We got we to set hard lines here. But you know what I think? I think, hey, yeah, in a year, I'll vote for somebody else. And if Trump wins again because the economy is good, then he'll be out in four. It's that simple. But the people who read the news all day are being driven insane, believing stories that can't possibly be true, that contradict each other. Think about it this way. Imagine reading this story and only this story that Giuliani believes insane conspiracy theories. You're probably gonna get really angry. You know, oh my God, Donald Trump, what's he doing? Uh, and then imagine you're a moderate who read both. You're gonna be like, they're lying. If the Democrats are only being fed the fake news and not checking it, they're gonna go insane. And that's what's happening. So let, let, me, let, me, let me say one more thing. Rage bait generates traffic. Making people angry generates traffic. We know it's true. The people who don't fact check their sources, the people who are not very, you know, online very often, or who just watch, say, Brian Stelter, who praised Facebook and YouTube taking down journalism, they're only getting a skewed view of the world because what the, the, the intent of someone like, you know, Brian Stelter or Oliver Darcy is to make you angry, not to inform you. And, you know, I'm, I'm surprised to find myself saying this, but I have to say, Brian Stelter recently said to tune out Fox News. Anybody who tells you to not listen to as much as possible is, is a dangerous liar or, or they're trying to manipulate you. Because I will tell you this, as I often do, I'm not always right. You absolutely should watch Brian Stelter. You absolutely should read Oliver Darcy. You should watch me. You should watch Tucker Carlson, Stephen Crowder. You should watch and David Pakman. You should watch as much as you can. Uh, I, I really do like telling people to, uh, I, I like promoting David Peckman a lot because I disagree with him on a lot of things. Um, but what they say about what, what the right says about him, the left says about me. And I thought that, that's a perfect example. So there, there was one instance where we both published videos about a week apart where David said Trump's approval all time low, mine said approval all time high. And I argued why I thought my position made more sense. And then I said specifically, go watch David, though, because you might actually find I'm wrong about it. it's just my opinion, right? I'm looking at the data. Here's what I think. What do you think? Do you agree with me or do you agree with David? If you want to have a healthy worldview and really understand what's happening, you need to watch, much, watch as much as possible. Brian Stelter, however, says, don't, don't watch them. Tune them out. Stop. Nah, that's, that's weird. That's, that's, a, uh, that's a dangerous manipulation. And so now you have people who are, all, and, and the reason they do it is the point is they want to get you angry. So you watch more. So you click more. So you become addicted to the anger. They are purposefully driving people mad. And the people on the left, the Democrats who don't fact check are becoming angry and angrier because the rage bait is working on them. Republicans less so because many Republicans reject the media. And there it is. So I don't know, check out this Twitter thread I wrote. It's kind of funny. We'll see if anything comes of it. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel, and I will see you all then.